know, we're very happy to be here and we're excited for our world premiere at Rain Dance, which is happening tomorrow, uh, Thursday, the 3rd at 9 o'clock at the oh, Genesis that's... Theater. So that's always important to let people know about, you know, here in the London area, if anyone's around, uh, we, we highly encourage them to show up and, and check out, uh, you know, Indie Rock's best kept secret of the 90s and, uh, and let, let's let it not be a secret anymore. Hi, I'm Dave. This is Cider Baby Pod. And today I'm talking to the people behind Traces of Glory, the film. Hello. 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 Would you like to introduce yourselves? Let's go ladies first. I'm Jan Jensen. I'm the producer of Traces of Glory. And this is my husband. I'm Mark Davis. I'm the director of Traces of Glory. And I'm Jeff Martin, the uh, uh, founder of Idaho, the band that is the subject of the documentary. Okay, so why a film about Idaho? I mean, I've got to say, Idaho I have passed me by, so uh, apologies, apologies, but um, tell me why. Well, it's 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 a band that that was really on the cusp of, I think, international stardom in the 90s, and you, you read these reviews that they had and everything really seemed to be going their way. And, and I'll let Jeff speak a little bit more to, to why they haven't really rocketed into the stratosphere. But for us, uh, we had always loved Idaho since the nineties. You know, my, my guitar player, when I had a band in New York city, turned me on to them. And, and I gradually got deeper and deeper into, into the music and into the sound. And, you know, I just really fell in love with them and had been following Jeff on Facebook. And one day he, he posted that he had all of this uh, vintage archival footage that he's been filming since the 90s, and he wanted to make a documentary about the film, and, and would anyone be able to take the helm on that? And I about fell out of my chair, getting <laughs> over to my wife and saying, this is the next film we're going to do. And at that point, we had done uh, three feature documentaries and sent <laughs> Jeff over all the material. and had a great chat on the phone and, and the chemistry was there and the access was there. And, and we just figured, oh, this is a great opportunity to, to really talk about and bring into the light a band that we really loved, that we knew really didn't have a huge following um, and sort of shamefully so because they really deserve, you know, as all the fans they have and more. So we really wanted to tell the story and that's how we, we got involved. Okay, so Jeff, uh, just tell me a little bit about your band. Well, it, it started, the Genesis was the early 80s. It was John Barry, somebody that I met in high school in Los Angeles. A friend introduced me to him and he kind of opened up my whole perspective with showing me the stuff that was coming out of England and, you know, you know, early punk rock from, from, from Detroit, you know, like the Stooges. And I was kind of just the basic preppy early 80s kid kind of sheltered from all this cool stuff that was going on and we started bands in the 80s that that kind of went all over the place and in the 90s John kind of begged me to do some songs with him again because I thought like you know I'm I've got to do things that are more legitimate and John the stuff I do with John is so edgy and weird and we hit on something right with with Idaho. We did a few songs and he ran into a woman in the market who uh, we knew from the 80s who was a manager and she sent the tape to Caroline Records and they signed us really quickly. We didn't even have a name. And so we, you know, we had this sound that was kind of unique and and uh, things just sort of took off from there. You know, Caroline Records did a great job. We got the word out and we did well here in England with the Melody Maker and the New Musical Express loved us and everything was kind of moving in the right direction. And he kind of went back into his drug use, which was always sort of a problem mm. and a yeah, problem and, and maybe not a problem in some cases, but that's hard. that's another uh, conversation. But But ultimately... Uh, we just had that one record together, but I took the band and I kept going and had some success. And and then when the 90s kind of fizzled with the indie rock thing kind of fizzling, we got dropped and and I just sort of took it on as more of a sort of personal project, a, a way to just sort of keep my brain quiet and mm. something I love to do and and had kind of a cult following. And ever since then, I've been putting out records and I've got really devoted followers, but it's not a big 
group of people, but it's kind of cool. I, I, it's the way I like it in a way. I'm not, I don't want to play by the rules. I'm not a big touring guy. And, and it's, 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 it's interesting how it happened. I mean, there are a lot of theories as to why it didn't get bigger. And I think it would take longer than the time we have to get into. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, that's a fair comment. Um, so what drew you to get all this onto, onto the big screen? I mean, we're talking about a film here. We're talking about a documentary film. Uh, we're not talking about some sort of like side project, half an hour thing on history TV or whatever <laughs> it is. You know, uh, what what was the decision behind getting this all out there? Well, it's it's a labor of love for us, and you know, we we fund everything ourselves. Uh, which which we really enjoy because then no one can kind of tell us what to do. Mm. And we love shining a light on topics that we're really close to. And that's how all of our films have been made. Um, these subjects that may not get the recognition of the larger studios because maybe the profits are not there, the money's not there, maybe the audience isn't, you know, as widespread as as the spreadsheet would suggest that you should have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we just love these little projects and, you know, Jan has a, a, a good job. And so we'll go off and film for a month or so, and she'll handle the audio portion of it and, and all the logistics and, and I'll film everything. And then, you know, she, she goes back to work and her day job basically. And, and I go off for a few years and craft this thing and we'll get together at night and talk about the film. And so it's really something that we do together. Mm. Um, we work really well together and because it's just the two of us, we're able to be really nimble and we're able to take on projects like this that we just love. And so it's, it's just sheer passion, enjoyment, and, and the love of, of Idaho and all of our subjects that, that, you know, get us along for, you know, sometimes two, three, four, five years in some cases, you know, to make these films and bring them to light and, and share them with the world. So that's what we're really about. Yeah, and for us, I think, you know, we just really have always loved uh, Jeff's music, and mm. it's such a visual landscape as well, um, and so to be able to use all the archival footage that he had, in addition to things that we shot in Los Angeles, and to be able to just share the music, we love the music, we want other people to know about it, and it's sort of just a shame that it, that he didn't become more famous, and so we're able to share the music uh, through the film, and hopefully have done him justice. <laughs> so going back to Idaho then, um, has this rekindled your passion for the band itself? And is there going to be new music coming out or is it just? Uh... Yeah, I, I, I did. I've spent all of last year or this year making a new record. And I, I do think that the documentary rekindled something because I was feeling like it was um, maybe I was transitioning out of it in a way, and uh, it was really fascinating to sort of see see go through the process with Mark and see what he was doing, and it it, it did get me excited about it again. It, it made me appreciate it, you know. I mean, sometimes you 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 lose appreciation for something, and you just need a little reminder mm -hmm. how special it is, and and uh, so yeah, I think it's one of the best records. I've made it's called laps and uh it's the first in 10 years and um you know it'll come out in a few months and we'll see you know if the doc gets people more interested and then with the new record and then a box set's being put out of all of our early 90s stuff by a Canadian label called, Ar called arts and crafts and so there's a lot going on this year so maybe it's sort of the renaissance of, for the band finally you know 30 years later <laughs> it's been a wait yeah <laughs> yeah uh, it's been a good it's it's been a good wait though it's i'm not complaining okay i mean the funny thing is that that everyone who's seen this film so far has really loved it fans and non-fans alike and people have i think sometimes all it takes is for people to be exposed to something hmm. that they might not ordinarily be exposed to and people that have listened to idaho they, they tell me all the time, I saw the film, I, I went out, I bought some Idaho, I'm getting into it. I've, I've slipped down the rabbit hole and it's really addicting music. It just takes, it's not, it's not the candy coated sugar infused, you know, music that we're used to listening to that that's sort of being pushed to us all the time through yeah. major outlets and through, you know, the, the radio and TV and, and other 
you know, I say TV because I'm 55, but obviously other, you know, <laughs> musical outlets and, and the way that people sort of ingest their, their music these days. But um, it's really promising. It's exciting to see. And, and that's, what we, that's what we really ultimately want is to expose, expose more people to Idaho. So it's okay. working. As a fan, were you actually shocked by some of the video footage or anything like that, or anything in the archives? That, uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> sh well, shocked. There's just a few shocking things. I mean, we're we're not we're not expose people, so we don't we don't dwell on those types of things. But I mean, really, I was sort of shocked by how very little of it was music centric. It was Ooh. more Jeff really just taking in his his sort of environment and just and chronicling it. So it, it wasn't like typical footage that you might see like, oh, we're gonna do a behind the scenes film on Tom Petty or Neil Young. And there's always a videographer and there's all this concert footage and you know backstage shots and things like that. It was really Jeff and his life. And yeah. I found that really fascinating. And it was really a window into the nineties in LA and so it was really special and very intimate because of that. And I, I think I loved that uh, the most about the footage once I had it all. And it was it was a lot to go through and organize, but it was certainly worth it. Yeah. Jeff, I mean, looking back, is there anything you'd have changed? Um, I mean, really, the answer, I think, is no, in a sense, because I'm happy where I am right now. I, I uh, but. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe I wish I had been a little more prolific and 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 toured a little bit more because I see bands that sort of started along with us like a band like 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 Low and Duster and they really kind of stayed in the scene and they're really pretty big right now in sort of a indie kind of way. I mean, they're they're definitely making a living and so it in in some sometimes I I wonder if 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 I should have been a little bit more aggressive with the promotion mm. but that's it it's it's I, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty happy with the way things are good so the film when does it come out well the good film is, the film will be premiering uh this thursday november 3rd at nine o'clock at the genesis theater here in london on the east side and uh, as far as other festivals, we're, we have uh, Sound Unseen is going to be our North American premiere on the 10th uh, in Minneapolis. So we're looking forward to that as well. And we're sort of getting into some other festivals as well, Beloit Film Festival. And we've gotten a few other mentions of people that want to see the film now, you know, and that it's been in rain dance, you know, that sort of wakes people up a little bit to, to film sometimes if they get into a, a great film festival, you know, and, and rain dance, of course, is. But you know, promotion wise, you know, we'll see if distributors are interested and, mm. you know, if not, we'll probably self distribute, which we've done with with our films thus far. And and it's a really easy process for us and a great way to get the film out, you know, to as many people as we can. So that's sort of in the future. Excellent. Well, guys, I wish you all the best and uh, I will I will take the time. Uh, I will watch the film. And thank you very much for your time today. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks thank for you. having us.